preserve the life of your children. You are told no one will die premature. Anyone that is sick, the Lord will heal them. In the name of Jesus, let's open our mouth and pray this morning. Any form of sickness among the brethren, the Lord take it away. I am the Lord that healed thee. Open your mouth and pray and call upon the Lord. No one will die premature. The Lord has promised us long life and prosperity. Let us pray for the fulfillment. Let's pray the Lord will take, take away, away every sickness, every spirit of death. Even in this environment, the Lord will destroy every negative, oh Lord, things from the church. Every premature death, let us arrest them by the power in the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood that will pass over you, pray this morning that the blood of Jesus Christ will preserve the church from every calamity, from every incident, from every accident. Our children, our family, our wife, our husband, our leaders, the Lord will preserve them. Open your mouth and pray this morning. The blood of Jesus Christ will preserve our lives, preserve the church. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Protect the church this time, O oh God. The Lord will open doors, breakthrough and prosperity. Open upon the church. Let us pray and talk to the Lord this morning. And say, Father, have your way this morning. Preserve our church. Preserve every one of us. Our family. No harm. No calamity upon the church. Let there be peace and progress. Let there be open doors for the members of the church. Let there be promotion. Let our expectation be fulfilled in our business, job, opportunities, in our family, in our church. Let's pray for our marriage, our family, our business, our finance. Let there be prosperity. Let there be open doors. Let there be opportunities in the company, in the ministry, the market. Let's pray this morning in our business. Let there be breakthroughs. Let there be opportunities. Let there be open doors. We be the head and not the tail. Let's open your mouth and pray this morning that will go up shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord will answer our prayers for the church in Jesus' name. He's the owner of the church. We are going to pray for the country, Nigeria. The Lord asks us to pray for the nation. Pray for the leaders. Pray for everyone that will live a, peace, a peaceful life, a quiet life, a prosperous life. Let us open our mouth and hand over the country, Nigeria, into the hands of the Lord this morning. Let's lift up this country, Nigeria, into the hands of the Lord and ask the Lord to have his way over this country, Nigeria. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. That the Lord will have his way over his church, over this country, in the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, in the central. Let the Lord take control. Let the Lord arise and fight the battle of this country, Nigeria. Let there be peace. Let the Lord arise and arrest every form of tension in this country. Political tension, election tension, all oh, the evil in this country. Let the Lord arrest them this morning. Open your mouth and pray and talk to the Lord this morning. And call upon the Lord. Every enemy of this country, every agent of darkness that is leaking the blood, that is leaking, is stealing, eating, all the, all the canker worms in this country, the Lord will arrest them. The Lord will strike them away. The fire of the Lord against all those evil. Let's pray this morning. A country where there is stupendous word, oh Lord, unspeakable word, where people are crying, that things is hard, things is hard. But the Lord has given us more than abundance. Let us pray and talk to the Lord this morning and say, let the Lord arise. Let the angels of the Lord arise this morning and enter into the situation of this country. Let there be peace. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration of peace, of prosperity in this country. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Let the Lord come to the aid. Let the cry of the people come unto the ears of the Lord this morning. Let the cry of the nation, the country, the country, the country, Nigeria, let the Lord arise this morning over this country and see into the situation, the cry of the people this morning and say, Lord, take control. People are dying. People are crying. Father, let our cry come unto thee. Arise this morning in agreement with you. We fight against every evil 
that is militating against the progress of the people, the citizens of this country, Nigeria, in the state, in the nation, everywhere, in the, in the Asoro. Let us pray this morning. Let thunder and lightning and earthquake strike and fire devour whatsoever evil idolatry, O oh God, that is fighting against the progress of this country, Nigeria, that is fighting against the prosperity of the citizens of this country, Nigeria. Let us pray this morning and talk to the Lord, that the Lord will give us a better leader, a God-fearing leader, a human concerned leader. Let us pray and talk to the Lord this morning and say, Lord, arise this country. Oh Lord, take control. Jesus Christ, arise and pilot the affairs of this country, Nigeria. Oh Lord, for the progress of your people, for the progress of the church, for the advancements of the gospel everywhere. Let us pray. Anything that is fighting against the gospel of the church in this country, any religion, every according religion, every evil religion, let the Lord destroy them. Let us fight bind every wicked spirit of religion and tradition without righteousness in this country. Let us bind them and destroy them. Every spirit from the air fighting against the progress of the church in this country, let us bind and destroy them and overcome them and destroy them every powers of darkness let's buy them this morning every territorial powers let us buy them every peculiar spirit let us buy them in this country nigeria this morning wherever they are have all their coven let thunder destroy let fire consume in all their coven there is all their hideout all their courting practice all the pirate on the sea let us pray this morning there is no hiding place let the fire of the lord Find them out and destroy all their powers, all their shrine, all their concussion, all their divination, all whatsoever their sacrifice. This morning, every political sacrifice against the progress of this country that want to take it by themselves. Let us pray this morning. Every spirit that want to make them to be the Lord over this country, let us bind and destroy them this morning. That everyone will surrender to the leadership of Jesus Christ. We surrender this morning and call upon the Lord that the Lord will open doors of opportunities for the teeming youth job opportunities in this country for the teeming youth let us pray and talk to the Lord this morning talk to the Lord for academic progress of this country the Lord arrests every corruption in this country the Lord is the owner of this country the Lord the hands of the Lord the heart of everyone is the hands of the Lord let's pray this morning and call upon God and say, Father, have your way. Take control. Be on the throne in this country, Nigeria. That every one of us will rejoice that thou art good. Let's thank the Lord this morning for this progress of this country. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise. A better hallelujah. Let's be seated. We want to take uh, choruses now. We want to take choruses now. Let's clap our hands. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is your day. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. God has made us glad. You are not glad though, the way you are singing. You are not glad. <laughs> Hallelujah! He has made me glad. I am so glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. We will enter in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. I will say, This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, for He has made us glad. God has made us glad. A 
Hallelujah for the Lord God, O many potent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, O many potent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered by His words. What sign was bound by the chains of Satan, but now I am delivered. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, by His words, what sign was bound by the chains of Satan, but now I am delivered. Praise the Lord, we are delivered. Praise the Lord, you are delivered by His words. Was we were bound by the chains of Satan, but now we are delivered. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh yeah, by his words. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty Jesus, he healed the lame man. When the people saw him, they started walking. Even today, our Lord will do us good. He will do you good. Anywhere you went, he was doing good. Oh, yeah. When the people saw him, they started walking. Even today, our Lord we do us good. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty Jesus, he healed the blind man. When the people saw him, they started praises. Even today, my Lord we do me good. He will do you good. He was doing good, even today, oh, oh yeah, even today, my Lord, we do me good, pass me not so gentle, say, if you're, yeah, my humble cry. While on earth does thou art calling, do not pass us by, blessed Savior, Savior, oh yeah, Savior, yeah. Our humble cry, yeah, our humble cry, while on earth does thou art calling. Do not pass us by, blessed Savior, 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 Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on earth as thou art called, calling. Do not pass me by, your hands. God is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save. Our God is able, abundantly able, 
to deliver those who trust in him, trust in him, God is, is able, is able to deliver you and to save us. Oh, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him. God is able, abundantly able to deliver and to save. My God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in Him, trust in Him. Expect your miracle when you pray. Expect your miracle when you pray. Expect your miracle when you pray. There is power seated on the throne, on the throne. Expect when you pray. Oh, when you pray, expect your miracle when you pray. There is power seated on the throne. Today, 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 our Jesus will answer us. Today, 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 oh yeah. I said today, today, this beautiful day, my Jesus will answer me today, today. What about you? Today, today. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to Jesus and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there. My brother, my sister, Leave it there, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there. Let's rise to our feet. Leave it there. Leave it there. If your body is to the Lord and leave it there, your prayers are answered. I said your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. Want to pray now? Want to pray now for our local government here and our state, River State? Begin to pray for the governor, his executives, council, the hands of government in the state, in the local government. Let's pray for our local governments. Let's pray for our state river states. There will be peace in our states. There will be peace in the local government. Let's say the Lord, our waterways will be peaceful, will be calm. There will be no sea pirates, no boat capsizing. God will grant us journey mercies on this waterway. There will be peace in Bonnie. 
just as we are experiencing for the past some months now, no more courtism, no more killing and here and there, God has caused peace to reign. Let's pray that this peace shall be perpetual. This peace shall be permanent in all the suburbs, most especially in the fishing port areas. There will be peace over there. There will be peace over there. There will be peace over there. All those people going there to collect their boats and engine and all of those things, that thing will stop. Let's pray for peace in all the suburbs, in all the fishing ports, in all the villages. There will be peace over there. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Let's pray. There shall be peace. If you have testimony, please go and share your testimony with our pastor at the back over there, the counselor. If you have any testimony to share, please do well to go and share your testimony with them. After thereafter, you'll be given opportunity to come up here. Let's pray for peace. Peace of God in our state. Peace of God in Bonnie Kingdom. Peace of God everywhere in the state, in the local government. In all the 23 local governments in River State, let's pray and declare peace of God. Let's pray for the governor, his executive council, that God will give them the wisdom to pilot the affairs of the, of the state. Our chairperson here in Bonnie Kingdom here, God will give her the wisdom to pilot the affairs of this kingdom. All those who are working with her, God will help them. The Spirit of God will direct them. Let's pray for the chief in council. Let's pray for the king, the paramount king in Bonnie Kingdom here. God will help them. God will give them the wisdom to continue. And the name of God will be glorified. Your prayer requests, please bring them. Let's say the Lord and say, Lord, let there be peace. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's come the road into the hands of the Lord. That God will fast track the completion of that road. Say amen. I'm going to tell the Lord and say, Father, fast track the completion of this bonny border road in Jesus' name. Shall we talk to God in prayer now? Let's say the Lord and say, Father, help us, Lord, this bonny border road, fast track the completion. Fast track the completion. Fast track, brothers, sisters, pray, oh, pray. There are powers stopping that road to be completed. Pray. Political powers are there. Traditional powers are there. Demonic powers are there. Blocking that road. Stopping the completion of that road. Pray now and say, Lord, we decree that that road be speedily completed. Talk to God in prayer now. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. And say, Father, let that road be completed in no distance time at all. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We thank God for the job opportunity coming. We want to pray for our brethren specifically. Lord, all our brethren, let them be gainfully employed in the employment going on in Bonnie region, in Bonnie Kingdom, in Jesus' name. Shall we talk to God in prayer now? Pray now and commit all our brethren to the hands of the Lord and say, Father, help Lord. All our brethren will be gainfully employed. Brothers and sisters, God we connect them supernaturally. God, we bring them in supernaturally. God, we give them good job, lasting job, profitable job, job that we allow them to serve God the better. God, we make an open door for them. Let's say the Lord. Some are putting their paper in Beru and one place or the other. God, we grant them, you know, open doors. That employment they are looking for, God, we grant unto them. God will surprise them. God will say to them. God will bless them. God will open up for them. The Bible says, He that does not work should not eat. God, you are, this is your word. Provide job for our brethren. Provide job for them. Good job. Lasting job. Profitable job. Prosper them exceedingly. Thank you, Father, for we believe you've answered us already. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Going to tell the Lord and say, Father, God Almighty, we want to raise up uh, the forthcoming crusade. It's just next week, Thursday, in Ninja State. Ninja State B is one of those uh, states in the northern part of Nigeria that banditry is eminent. We are going to pray and say, Lord, every activity of the bandits, kidnappers, Boko Haram, or what have you, Lord, we dislodge all their activities. Lord, blindfold them. 
against our program in Jesus' name. Shall we talk to God in prayer? That that crusade we hold. It will not be like Abba. Abia says a uh, crusade. I say, oh, because of problem here and there, we could not hold the program. It shall not be. Talk to God in prayer now. And say, God will help us in that crusade. That crusade will be successful. That crusade will be successful. That crusade will be successful. Let's say the Lord, that God Almighty will help. The name of the Lord will be glorified in that crusade. Talk to God in prayers and say, Lord, have your way. Are you praying, my brother? Are you praying, my sister? Talk to God in prayer. That crusade will be successful from day one to the very last day of that crusade. There shall be no evil reports. There shall be no evil reports pertaining to that crusade. There will be no negative reports. There will be no negative reports. The will of God be done. Let's pray. As the state of Asia and all his entourage over there in that state are preparing the ground for the global crusade, God will work with them. The power of God will be upon them. The wisdom of God will be upon them. The spirit of God will work with them. All plans will go on smoothly. All the resources needed, God Almighty will provide. God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. All the ministers, special anointing will rest upon them. Tell the Lord and say, Father, fill them with your anointing. The choristers, the ushers, the security personnel, the electrical crew, the transmission crew, oh, all the moderators, all the counselors, the anointing of God will rest upon them. The power of God will be upon them. God will pass through them to do great things through that crusade. Talk to God in prayer now. There shall be global miracles, global testimonies, global salvation, global deliverance, global restoration of backsliders. Talk to God and say, Father, prove yourself. Father, prove yourself as a mighty God. He said, if you be lifted up, you shall draw all men to yourself. That crusade will be successful. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We want to pray right now for our Father and the Lord. Specifically, God will empower him. God will prepare him. The host of heaven will encamp round about him in Jesus' name. No matter the arrow the enemy may shoot here and there, it will not get at him in Jesus' name. The anointing of God will rest upon him. As he opens his mouth, great things will happen globally in Jesus' name. Let's talk to God in prayer now. And say, Father, we lift up your servant, our Father and Lord, Pastor the Wave Kumi. Oh God, as he's preparing, Father, prepare him. Holy Ghost, prepare him. Go with him. Let your presence abide with him. Use him to do valiant things over there. As he goes, as he opens his mouth, oh God, there will be global miracles all over, all over, all over. Great things will happen. The name of the Lord will be glorified. No matter the, you know, the onslaught of the devil, the plans of the enemy against him, everything is scattered and shattered already. Lord, make a wall of fire round about him. Encamp round about him. No evil will befall him. Keep him strong and healthy. Healthy physically, healthy spiritually. We pray that, Father, your grace be abundant upon his life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'm going to tell the Lord and say, Father, in this crusade, let us have spectacular miracles in Boni region. You are not saying amen. In Boni region, in the villages, in the in all our groups, in all our district centers, every all the centers where we are out, outside or inside, Lord, in all our centers in Boni region, let there be spectacular miracles that we call for word attention in Jesus' name. Open your mouth now and talk to God in prayer. That miracle can happen in your life. That miracle will happen in my life. That miracle will happen in our life. Pray now. Pray now. And say the Lord and say, Father, let there be unspeakable supernatural miracles, most especially in Bonnie region. In this forthcoming crusade, the God of all possibilities. The God of all possibilities. Make all things possible in Bonnie region. Glorify yourself, O oh God, and let your name be glorified.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. The man of God you are. And the consuming fire you are. The man of God you are. And the consuming fire you are. The man of war you are. The man of In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We want to pray the warfare prayer. I'm reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I read first 4 and 5. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that is sorted in self against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Give me a louder amen. amen. We are going to rise up on our feet. You lift your voice to God Almighty and say, Lord, every stronghold of Satan in our alpha location of this first coming crusade in Mina, let every stronghold of Satan be pulled down in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and say, Lord, this morning, we pull down, we destroy, we throw down. Every struggle of Satan in Mina Niger State, the Alpha location of forthcoming crusade, Lord, we cast down every power, every evil imagination that want to work against that crusade. We render them powerless. We cast down, we pull down every struggle of Satan. We pull it down in our various location for this forthcoming crusade in Mina Niger State. Every struggle of Satan in Alpha location, we pull it down. We pull it down. Every struggle of Satan in our life, in our family, in our church, in our nation, we pull it down. In the name of Jesus, every struggle of Satan in our life, in our church, in our family, we pull it down this morning. We cast down every imagination, every item that is sorted inside against the knowledge of God. Against this our forthcoming crusade, we bring them to captivity. Let's pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Give me a louder amen. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. I read verse 23. Against me. Neither there is any divination against me. According to this time, it shall be said of me, of you, what had God wrought. So shall it be in Jesus' name. We are going to lift our voice to God Almighty and say every enchantment, every evil pronouncement, every incantation against me, against my family, shall be scattered. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every enchantment, every incantation made by the enemy of progress, God will scatter it this morning. It will not work against my life. It will not work against my children. There is no enchantment against me and my family. Every evil pronouncement shall be cancelled. Every incantation, God will not allow you to work against my family. God will scatter it this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every judgment pass against me, pass against you in the kingdom of darkness. We cancel you this morning. We cancel you this morning. Every judgment pass against you, pass against me in the kingdom of darkness. We nullify you this morning. We cancel you this morning. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. 
mighty name we pray. Give me a louder amen. I'm reading from the book of the same numbers, chapter 23. I'm reading verse 29. And Bala said unto Bala, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullock and seven rams. That altar is an evil altar. Balaam was employed by Balak to pronounce evil pronunciation against Israel, to call the children of Israel. And God that frustrates Balaam and Balak, he will frustrate enemy that build evil altar against you and your family in Jesus' name. Rise up and say, Lord, every evil altar build around my family. Every evil altar build around my business. Every evil altar build around our family shall be scattered. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, let every evil altar be scattered this morning. Every evil altar, altar of affliction, altar of sickness and death, let every evil altar build around my family members be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every altar of affliction, altar of poverty and sickness shall be scattered. Rise up and pray. Rise up and pray. Every evil altar build around my family, build around our business, shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you, against me, against your family, shall I fall for your sake in Jesus' name. Rise up and pray and say, Lord, every ungodly gathering, every ungodly gathering, every evil conspiracy, Wherever the enemy has gathered against me, against my family, Lord, this morning arise on my behalf. Let the enemy of progress that gang up against my family be scattered. Lord, scatter their plan. Lord, frustrate their plan. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Surely they shall surely gather. But not by me. Whosoever that gather against you, against me, against our family, they shall fall for our sake. Your enemy will fall. They will not succeed. God will scatter their plan. All the enemy of progress, those that gang up against our ministry, against our church, against our business, God will frustrate their plan. God will frustrate them. God will scatter their plan this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 13, but he answered and said every plan, which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Rise up and pray and say, Lord, every establishment of devil in my home, every establishment of devil in my marriage, every establishment of devil in my business, Lord, dismantle it by fire this morning. Every establishment of devil against my life, against our marriage shall be dismantled. Shall be dismantled by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil plantation, wherever the, that evil plantation is hiding in your body, the power of God will root them out of your life. Every establishment of devil against you, against your marriage, shall be dismantled this morning. Anything that is not of God in your body shall be rooted out this morning. Your body is the temple of God. My body is the temple of God. Whatsoever that the enemy has planted, the power of God will uproot them from our life. God will uproot every sickness. Every evil arrow shall be uprooted. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, every evil plantation that the enemy has planted into my life, into my marriage, shall be uprooted by fire. Every establishment of devil in our home shall be dismantled in the name of Jesus. Pray and talk to the Lord. That evil plantation shall be uprooted. Your body is the temple of God. It's not the temple of sickness. 
In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Exodus chapter 23, I read verse 25 and 26. And yes, I said the Lord your God, and he shall bless the bread and the water. And I will take away sickness away from the midst of thee. This is the word of God. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, take away sickness from my body. Root out sickness out of my body. Open your mouth and say, this morning your word says, you will take away sickness from the midst of thee. We take you by your word this morning. Every member of our family, all those, our family members that are sick, Lord, take away sickness from their body. Open your mouth and pray. The Bible says, There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. Every spirit of barrenness in your life, in your marriage, shall be uprooted. Your marriage shall be fruitful. Open your mouth and say this morning, O Lord, take away barrenness. Uproot every spirit of barrenness out of my life. Let my marriage be fruitful. Those that are looking unto you for the fruit of womb, this morning, O Lord, Lord, let their marriage be fruitful. Open their womb this morning. The Bible said, the numbers of your days you will fulfill. Pray and talk to the Lord and say this morning, O Lord, I will fulfill the numbers of my days. I shall not die before my time. I will live long. Pray and talk to the Lord. The numbers of your days you will fulfill. In Jesus mighty name we pray in Job chapter 42 and the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning the latter part of this year for you and your family it will be greater than your beginning in Jesus name and the Lord also the Lord blessed the latter part of Job more than his beginning for he has 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand asses. Rise up and raise up your hand to God and say, Lord, the latter part of this year shall be greater than my beginning. The latter part of this year, I will not spend it in the kidnapper den. I will not spend it in the hospital. I will cross over to 2023 with my family. The latter part of this year shall be greater. The latter part of this year shall be brighter. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. The latter part of this year shall be greater than my beginning. This remaining months shall be greater, shall be brighter. The latter part of this year, I will not spend it in kidnapper dens. I will not spend it in the grave. I will not spend it in the hospital. The latter part of this year shall be greater in our family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We have some prayer requests here. And I want us to pray for this prayer request. Here is one prayer request. Say, God, I thank you for my life and the life of my family, the life of my brethren. He said, brother, help me to pray for my family that there should be forgiveness, that they should forgive my family. Let's pray for that individual and say, Lord, let that be forgiveness. Every spirit of unforgiveness shall be uprooted from that family. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. God will forgive them. The mercy of God will speak for that family. The mercy of God will rejoice over judgment, over that family, over every member of that family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Here is another prayer request, a prayer request for protection for my family. I want God to destroy the work of the devil from my family. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's open our mouth and pray and say, let the work of the devil be destroyed in the family of this individual. That God will take away sickness. There shall be favor. There shall be prosperity. Every power that is working against this family, God will destroy that power this morning. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Here is another prayer request. Say, God, give me the seal to serve you. 
in truth and in spirit. And let your divine protection rest upon my family. Let's open our mouth and pray for that individual that God will give him or her the seed to serve God in truth and in spirit. There shall be divine protection upon this family. Lord, we take away delay in marriage from this family. The admission of that individual will come to pass. There shall be academic excellence in all ramification. Say, Lord, take away the spirit of anger from my life. And let, Lord, let God give me divine help. God will take away the spirit of stagnancy from that family. Open your mouth and pray for them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Here is another prayer request. So we should pray for divine health, divine provision for the family, salvation and grace for every member of the family. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's pray for the son of that, our brother, that God will save him and deliver him from sin. Every influence of the wicked one against this family, God will scatter it and frustrate it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is another prayer request. Say, God, give my husband a good job. Let's open our mouth and pray for that sister. That God will give her husband a good job. There shall be job opportunity for every member of that family. God will grant your children divine health. God will take away sickness from that family. There shall be success, breakthrough. Say, God, give my families steadfast in serving you wholeheartedly. Oh, Let's pray. Let's ask God that this prayer request, God will turn it to testimony this morning. Here is another prayer request. I want God to deliver me from terrible dreams and give me clear sight. Let's open our mouth and pray. Good head for that, our brother. God will deliver you from terrible dream. Every bad dream shall be canceled. Every negative dream shall be canceled. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, another prayer request. Say, I want God to pray. I want the church to pray for my mother because she's not feeling fine. That's Damn your mother, wherever she is, the power of God will locate her. There shall be healing, deliverance upon that mommy. God will deliver your mother from sickness in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's open our mouth and pray. Say, I need the short to pray for my father that God will give him employment in the side. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Yes, another prayer request. Eh? I want God to take away the spirit of death from my family. Let's lift our voice to God Almighty and pray for that individual. That God will take away the spirit of death. God will not allow death in that family. I want God to take away every power that is holding my husband's work. And I want God to provide more customers for me. Let's open our mouth and pray for that individual. I want God to help me to Pay my debts. God will provide for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Here is another prayer request. I want God to provide for us in order to pay our debts and foul. Let's rise up and pray for that individual. That God will answer this prayer. The debt will be paid. Let's open our mouth and pray. That God will cancel any petition against me from any corner. Let's ask God to provide for my family and establish my children. Let's pray for, to God to provide money for a specific project. Let's pray for divine visitation upon that family. Total healing of all sickness. Deliverance from every form of affliction from that family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's stretch forth our hand to this prayer request. And pray and say, Lord, as we have prayed over this prayer request this morning, turn this prayer request to testimony. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's agree together and say, Lord, we hand over all this prayer request into your hand this morning. 
upon this prayer request to testimony. Visit our brethren at point of their need. Grant them their heart desire this morning. Those that are asking for healing, Lord, heal them. Those that are looking unto you for job, Lord, give them job. Open your mouth and pray and say this morning, O Lord, turn this prayer request to testimony. Grant us our heart desire. Visit each and every one of us at point of our need. Take away sickness from our family. Take away death. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you this morning because you are so good to us. We appreciate you for your goodness upon our life. Thank you for your presence in this meeting. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have. That when we pray according to your will, that you will hear us. Lord, all the prayer that we have over this morning, concerning our family, concerning this prayer request, answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that every petition that we bring before you this morning, Lord, grant us our heart desire in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because we have answered. We cover this prayer request with blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's remain standing. No testimony, but I'm believing God that between now and next week, Wednesday, God will put testimony in your lips in Jesus' name. As we are waiting for our Father in the Lord, I want you to pray this morning and say, Lord, through the ministration of your servant this morning, Lord, do something new in my life. Something spectacular in my life. Something meaningful in my life. Something tangible in my life. Through the ministration of your servant, Lord, this morning, put testimony in my lips. Touch my life this morning. Touch my problem this morning. Visit me at point of my need this morning. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Through the ministration of his servant, the Bible says, Behold, I will do a new thing in your life, in your family. Through the ministration of his servant, God will do a new thing in your life. In this church this morning, God will do a new thing. Something meaningful, something spectacular, God will do it in our life. Let's open our mouth and pray. Talk to the Lord. Say this morning, O oh Lord, visit me at point of my need. Do something new in my life this morning. Do something new in my family. Commit your ways, your today, your heart desires, ask the Lord to reach you at the point of your need. I know you have prayed already, but I want to tell you that God is here to honor your prayers. God will not allow you go home empty and dead. God will not fail to bless you. You have come here to present your request before God. You've made your petitions unto God. You must expect something. You must expect something. Don't just pray for praying's sake. Pray with expectation. Pray with faith. Pray with trust and believe that your prayer today and the word of God you are going to hear will produce something in your life. That the word of God will produce results in your life. The word of God will do you good something will happen to you. Not another person, you in particular. A change will come your way. The blessing of God will locate you. God's favor will be established in your life. Are you in bondage in any form? 
ask God to bring deliverance upon you? Are you bound by sin or Satan? Ask God to bring freedom upon your life. Are you tied by the enemy and you cannot fly the way you want to fly? Tell God to loose you and break the chains surrounding you and your progress because God will do something for you today. It will touch every area of your life and you'll be free, you'll be happy that you came to the house of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God give me a better amen. Thank you, Father, because this is another day. Today is not yesterday. And today is not tomorrow. This is a day you have made specifically to bless, to do something in our lives. Father, let this day be a remarkable day, an unforgettable day, a day that we will ever live to remember in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your spirit take over the message now. Every verse we are going to read, make it meaningful, profitable to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. If there are people here that never, never received miracle before, they are, they've been looking for miracle, but they never get one. Lord, I pray today will be the beginning of miracle in their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Their expectations will not be cut off. Their desires will be granted. The will of God will be done in their lives. Touch every brother. Touch every sister. Meet everyone at the point of their knees in Jesus' name. Lord, speak in a very simple way and the manner that we will all understand that nobody will leave this gathering the same way. Lord, do something for everyone. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered me. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You can sit down. I have a very simple topic to share with you this morning. We want to read the book of John chapter 11. I read from verse 44. John chapter 11 from verse 44. I read. And he that was dead came forth. This is the story of Lazarus, a man that was dead and buried. And then Christ came to the sisters, to the family members, and said, This your brother will come back to life again. But the people doubted at first. And Christ instructed them what they should do. And when that was so done, Jesus Christ commanded Lazarus and he came forth. But that was not the end of the story. As he came forth, he was still bound, like we read in verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with napkin Jesus said unto them what's the next thing there lose him and let him go that is what I'm going to talk about this morning lose him and let him go let's all say that together one go again 
again. Now that means that this man was bound. You see the, the condition of this man. But a person that is bound can never be useful to himself, to the family, and to the society. He was bound and he could not make progress because he was bound. He was tied and Christ wanted him loose. And I can tell you this morning, if you are tied by the devil, you'll be loose this morning. You know, there are people that the devil tied them with sin, with sickness, with poverty, with barrenness. Failure is always their routine belief. They never can believe they can be free because they are bound. And nothing seems to be working for them. But this morning, you'll be loose and let go in Jesus' name. Now, if you look at that topic, say losing. Christ did not stop there. Because somebody can be loose and still remain static in the same position. Somebody can be loose and yet with no movement. But Christ said, no. We lose him, let him go. We mean that this morning, as you are loose from sin, you will go and serve God. As you are loose from sickness and limitation, you will go and make progress. So that was the goal. Say, so lose him, let him go and perform. Let him go and succeed. I want to read similar scriptures to us this morning that a lot of people are in bondage to Satan, to sin, sickness, poverty, and so on. Look at Romans chapter 7. I want to show you something there. In Romans chapter 7, I want to read from verse 14 to 24. Romans chapter 7 from verse 14 to 24. For we know that the law is spiritual. Now, when you look at that verse, Paul said everything about God is spiritual. To serve God is spiritual. To obey God is spiritual. To be born again is spiritual. To love God is spiritual. You wonder why people come to church and they cannot do any of this. It's because something tied them. Sin is on their neck and they cannot exercise their willingness, their right to serve God in spirit and in truth because the law of God is spiritual. And so a carnal man cannot do the spiritual things. It's like some people coming to church and you are telling them, love God. They can't love God because they're not spiritual. Pray. They can't pray because they're not spiritual. This is what you ought to do as a Christian every morning. They can't do it. They know that's the right thing to be done, but they cannot do it because the law of God is spiritual. And it takes only a spiritual man to practice the spiritual things. It takes a spiritual man to obey God, to fear God, to love God, to stop sin. And Paul said this I know very well. That's why I am handicapped. When I hear the word of God, I can't practice it because it is spiritual and I am carnal. I can't obey God. I can't take instruction from my leaders. I cannot be submissive. I cannot go the way I'm supposed to go, run the way I'm supposed to run, love God the way I'm supposed to love God because I'm a kind of man. And all these things is spiritual. So, look at this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin, bound by sin, enslaved by sin captured by sin for that which I do I allow not for what I would 
that do I not. But what I hate to do, I don't like telling lies, but I find myself telling lies. I don't like fornicating, I see myself fornicating. I don't like stealing, I see myself stealing. I don't like quarreling. And he said, the things I hate, I know this is not good. He will not give me anything good, he will not offer me anything good in the future, but why am I so addicted to doing them? It's because I'm carnal. And everything about God is spiritual. It will take a spiritual man to be free from sin, to serve the Lord, to love the Lord, to obey God. And he said, the things I hate to do, those are the things I find myself doing. In verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is, it is good. 17, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This tells us a state of every sinner. Every sinner, man or woman, educated, illiterate, and some beautiful, is in bondage. It's a slave. It's a captive. He said, the things I love to do, I just love the way people are serving God. But I can't serve God like them. I love the way people are praying, but I can't pray like them. I love the way people love God and serve God, committed to God, they are righteous. I desire to be like that, but I cannot. I love the way people come to church, do the work of God, evangelize with souls and visit, but I cannot be like them. And he said, the things I love to do, I can't do them. I can't do them. And look at 17 now. Then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's something that is compelling me against my wish, against my desire. I don't love to tell lies, but I always find myself telling lies. I don't love to steal. I will find myself stealing. I promise the Lord I will never go to church late again, but I find myself going to church late. I promise myself I will never go back to that sin again, but I still find myself committing that sin. And because it is not controlled by the man, is not the one controlling himself. It is the sin that is controlling him. A person like this not to be loose. And if the person like this is not loose from that sin, he can never serve God. He can remain in the church for a long time, for years, but he cannot be a true Christian. A sinner must be loose from sin to serve God. A backslider must be loose from backsliding to get restored and worship God. So you see that people are tied in many ways. Paul, before he became, he was sold now, before now, before he became Paul, was tied by sin, bound by sin, and he could not exercise his will. He could not do the right thing. He could not go the right direction. He could not obey God with all his heart. But look at verse 18 now, for I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I. You see that? We mean that a person like this has no will of his own. His will is being captured by Satan. He's being ruled by Satan. And the power of darkness is what is telegizing, leading, controlling the person. And he said that this is the problem I have, but sin that dwelleth in me. In verse 21, look at this. I find then a law that when I would do good, even when I've made up my mind to do good, evil is present with me. If a person like this is not in bondage, who then is in bondage? If a person like this is not tied, who then is tied? If a person like this does not require freedom, who deserves freedom? And so he knew that there was something wrong. And just like that man was physically bound when he came out of the grave, every sinner is bound by sin, tied by the devil. 
And that's why they cannot serve God the way they want to serve God. They want to run, they cannot run. They want to pray, they cannot pray. And they are struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. They can never be free. Now, look at verse 23. But I see another law in my members. Worrying, fighting against the law of my mind. And bringing me, what do you see there? Into what? Captivity. Every sinner is a slave. That's why they do what they do. That's why they go where they go. That's why they act the way they're acting. That's why they're behaving the way they're behaving. When you see a sinner telling lies, he's telling lies because that's the nature of a, of, of, of a sinner. He steals because that's the nature of a sinner. He quarrels, he fights, he gets angry. That's the nature of a sinner. But freedom will never come except Jesus Christ comes in. And a lot of them struggle on their own. They try to stop it one day, two days, they see go back. Try to stop it three days, four days, they see go back. Because it is not in their power to lose themselves. It is not in their power to free themselves. It is not in their power to enjoy what they want to enjoy. Because they have been controlled. He said, into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Now look at verse 24 now. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Sin make every sinner wretched, but you will lose from wretchedness. I didn't hear you remember very well. I say you will be loose from your wretchedness in Jesus' name. But see the solution here in verse 25. I thank God. You will thank God today. Through Jesus Christ, the same Christ that delivered Lazarus, brought him out of the grave, is the one Paul is referring to here. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So a miracle took place when Christ came in. A miracle took place, so he was loosed from the power and the bondage of sin when Christ came in. That's what happened, that Lazarus was bound, just like many people are bound today. Lazarus was tied, just like many people are tied today by sin and all other things like that, that the devil placed on them. But the difference was made when Christ came in. And today, Jesus will come into your situation. That amen is as if you are not too sure. I said today, Jesus will come into your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at Luke chapter 13. I read verse 12 and 16. In Luke chapter 13, verse 12 and 16. Luke 13, 12 and 16. Luke 13, 12 and 16. Luke chapter 13, verses 12 and 16. Are you there? Verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, what did he tell her? Thou art loose from thy infirmity. You'll be loose this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus saw this woman burned by sin, sorry, by infirmity, by sickness. And this has been in that condition for years. When Christ saw her, he had pitied on her. But look at verse 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan, what's the next word there? As bound low, this 18 years be what? Loosed from his from this bond on the Sabbath day. This is what only Jesus can do. He is in the business of losing people from whatever form of bondages, whatever form of slavery. Jesus is in the business of losing sinners from sin and then losing the sick from sicknesses and losing the poor people from poverty and from everything 
that the enemy has put on them. Look at Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, I read verse 30. Luke chapter 19, I read verse 30. I read, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a court tied. And I don't know how you are. You are supposed to be very useful, but enemy tied you down. You are supposed to be very good man, progressive man, successful woman, but enemy tied you down. Tied you either in sin, in poverty, in wretchedness, in sickness, but here was a cult. And this cult would never have been useful as long as he remained tied. This cult would have never been come to this, should I call it the capacity God wanted this cult to get to if this cult was not loose. But it was a cult, something that can be useful, but tied. And I want to tell you today, you be loose in the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever is tying you, tying your future, tying your progress, tying everything about you, God will lose you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at that again. Go ye into the village over against you. In the which at your entering, you shall find a cold tide. Whereon, yet, listen to this, never man sat. It's not God was, was meant to be used. To be right on upon. But this cup, because it was tied, and was never a man that made use of it. Is your life like this? You are supposed to be great, but you are not great. You are supposed to be useful, but you are not useful. And never a man sat on it. But Christ said, Give a command. Like John will give a command on your behalf this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, lose him and bring him either. Lose the cult. I want to start making use of that cult. That cult was created to be useful, to be sat on, upon. But the cult had been there tied and no man ever sat on it. I want to start making use of it. And I want to tell you today, as you are loose from sin and from Satan, you'll be useful in the hand of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at this. In verse 31, And if any man asks you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. When you lose the cult and bring it to me, I'm going to use it. I will sit on it and all that. I pray today, as you are loose from sin, from your enemy, God will begin to make use of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So anything tied cannot be useful. Anything tied cannot be useful. Anything tied. That's why a lot of people that should have, could have been useful and be useful and do something or one thing or the other because they are tied. They become not useful, unprofitable. So it is difficult to make progress in bondage. Difficult to make progress. That someone is tied like Lazarus and then you now hear that he's making progress. No. Nobody like Lazarus could make progress in life. Because he was tied, he was bound. Nobody like Lazarus could go far. Nobody. And a lot of people are in that condition. They're supposed to be on the top, but you see them down below the valley. They're supposed to be spreading everywhere, moving everywhere, successful here and there, making progress, but they are tied, and as long as they're in that bondage, they cannot excel. And so when just Christ lose. That he said, commanded them to lose him. He now said, let him go and do what he could not do before. And so nobody that is under bondage that can make progress. Certain holds people hostages in many ways. 
As I told you earlier, some of them, he tied them in sin. Some of them, he tied them with sickness. Some of them, he tied them with poverty. Some of them, he bound their future and their progress and all that. And you see the man just living like that and wasting the years. And he's not going forward. He's not going backward. But this morning, you'll be loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at Exodus chapter 3. You know the story of the children of Israel. Children of Israel, people of God, great people, they were in Egypt, and in Egypt, they were limited. In Egypt, they suffered. In Egypt, they could not decide themselves. In Egypt, they could not worship God the way they wanted to worship God because there were limitations here and there in Egypt. They were not having their personal liberty to fly for the Lord, to make feast to God, to serve the Lord, to worship God the way they wanted because Egypt I mean, enslaved them. And so for them to be able to exercise that potential in them and be very useful and profitable, God made a plan for them to come out from Egypt because God knew as long as these people continue to remain in Egypt, they can never be their best in Egypt. Egypt will slow them down. Egypt will limit them. Egypt will make them not to excel. And that's what happened to every man almost all over the world. And so God knew that Israelites, look at these people, God gave them a promised land. And the promised land was there waiting for them when they will come and possess the land. But if they were to remain in Egypt, they would be completely cut off from the promised land. There were so many good things that God promised to give them and do for them. But as long as they remain in Egypt, they can never get to that point in life. And so God said, why must my people continue? Because there are many good things ahead of them. And I can tell you this morning, there are many good things ahead of you. And God will bring you out of Egypt. God will loose you from your bondage and then take you to the place you're supposed to be in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 3. Then you will understand. If you understand this message very well this morning, as I'm preaching right now to you, look at your life. Look at what surrounds you. Look at the level you are now. Where you are today is there where God wanted you to be, is there where God has planned you to be. And you don't you have limitations in your life? The sin that is there, the evil that is there, and you're not flying with the color you wanted to fly with. And all that, all those limitations shall be destroyed this morning in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7. Exodus chapter 3. Look at the Bible. In Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I would like to read from verse 7. And then verse 10. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 to 10 are you there and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster no listen to me very well everyone that is in bondage is under a taskmaster Egypt's, uh, Israelites were under Pharaoh, a taskmaster. Every sinner is under Satan, the taskmaster. And all the things that happen to people when the taskmaster is the one controlling them, is the one deciding for them, is the one dictating for them, they can never be on their own. They can't go make progress, they can't excel. And so these people were under the taskmaster. And in that condition, the Bible said they cried unto the Lord. Taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. Look at verse 8 now. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of Israel. Can I hear good amen, dear? And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large. You see that? They were in the land. That was not large enough. Why there was good land waiting for them? You can see the limitation there. 
They were in a, in a place that they were confined. They cannot exercise themselves. Why where God wanted them to be is where they can use all that they have to serve the Lord. And God said, there's a better land waiting for you. But you are suffering in Egypt. You are in bondage in Egypt. And see this. In a good and a large unto a land. What do you see there? Flowing with milk and honey. There's a better future for you. That amen is as if you are not too strong. I said there's a better future for you. God wants to lose you and let you go and enter that blessing. God wants to lose you and let you go. There's a man waiting for you to marry you. But as long as you are tied, the man will never come. He will never see you. But this morning, I prophesy to you. This is not a mere prophecy. You'll be loose this morning. And after this morning, somebody will come for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. He said, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Ittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Look at verse 10 now. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God will bring you out of your bondage. You'll be loosed from your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what was the purpose? That's why I said, there's a situation you find yourself, you can't be your best. You can't exercise your rights. You'll be limited in, in, in so many ways. And because as long as they, they remain, to continue to remain in Egypt, in Egypt, they could not have the liberty to serve the Lord. You see most people coming to church, as long as they remain in sin, and sin has not left them, and they have not left sin, they can't serve God. They can be in the church for one year, for two years, but real serving of God, they are not serving God. They can't serve God because nobody can serve God with sin. And the Bible says the true worshippers must worship God how? In spirit and in truth. So it takes a spiritual man to serve God, to love God, to worship God. And so they were in bondage in Egypt. Even when they want to, wanted to exercise the authority and then sacrifice their feast to God and they were limited in every area. And God said, no, my children cannot continue like this. I will bring them out to a place where they have all the rights, all the freedom, all the liberty to worship me. God will take us to that point in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at this. In chapter 4, look at verse 23. Chapter 4, verse 23 of Exodus. And see why God decided to bring them out, to lose them. Just like Christ, just told uh, uh, Lazarus, he said, lose him. He said they should lose him and let him go. That means a lot. Lose Lazarus. If he was a sinner, let him go now and serve me. Lose Lazarus. If he if, if, if was a poor man, let him go and, be, and, pros, and prosper. If he was a man without a wife, lose Lazarus. Let him go and get married. So many things and things in that. Lose him. And for now, he can't do anything for himself. He's nobody. Lose him now. Let him go and go to places and go and succeed. Look at this. In chapter 4, I read from verse 23. Are you there? From verse 23. And I say unto thee, let my son go. That's referring to Israel. That he may do what? Serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. That was the goal. Because Israelites are supposed to serve me. But in Egypt, that liberty is not there. Nobody can serve God in sin. As long as we're in the bondage of sin, you can't pray the way God wants you to pray. You can't excel. You can't give, render real service to God. And so before you can really serve the Lord, you must come out of sin. God must lose you out of sin. And then he said, I will take them out of this place. Look at verse chapter 7 now in verse 16. Chapter 7. 
I read verse 16. Are you there? Chapter 7, verse 16. And God keeps saying this repeatedly. 7, 16. He said, And thou shalt say unto him, to Pharaoh, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, What's the next word there? Let my people go, that they may do what? Serve me in the wilderness. He repeatedly said this. That these people were limited in the service of God. Limited in their love for God. Limited in their prayer life. Limited in every aspect of their life. And they were not able to do much for God. Because they were in Egypt. In bondage. No liberty. No liberty. Look at the Bible. In chapter... In chapter 8. I read verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses... Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus hears the Lord. What's the next word there? Let my people go that they may do what? Serve me. Sometimes we complain. Why is this person not able to serve God? He has been coming to teach this church for a long time and he's not able to serve God very well. Well, the reason is that it's not, it, the person has not been loose from sin. So there's no how. He can't do magic. Because a kind of man cannot offer a spiritual service. What happened that this person is not, is not zealous, he's not committed? The reason is very clear. He's not been loose from some entanglement. Until the person is loose from certain things, he cannot give God the best. So that was the condition of these people. Look at chapter Romans chapter 8. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Look at chapter 8. Chapter 8. Verse 20 of Exodus. Are you there? I read verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses... Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him the same thing. Thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may do all. They may serve me. In chapter 9, verse 1. Chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 13. I read. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him. God believed in the deliverance of his children, the freedom of his people. Every enemy holding you hostage, God will talk them and talk you out of their hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything holding you, he keep telling, he keep telling, say repeatedly, I don't want my people to be in bondage. I don't want, just like Christ did not want Lazarus to continue in the grave. He wanted him to comfort. And today, you will comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll be loose. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of, of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Then in verse 13, In verse 13, I read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Look up, everybody. There's a lesson here to learn. We have crusade, global crusade every time. And we have so many brothers and sisters around us, neighbors who are sinners, bound by Satan, tied by, by sin. We are afraid to go and tell them. Some of them are big men, but they're tied. Some of them are rich men, but they're tied. Some of them are handsome men, but they're tied. Some of them are beautiful young ladies, but they're tied. How would they be free if the people like Moses would not have the courage to go and go to that man, that woman, that neighbor, that friend, and tell them, you know, Moses was commanded by God. He said, go and tell Pharaoh. Go and tell Pharaoh. And we must be courageous enough to pray 
until the hand of Satan will be loose from the life of the people in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, That's why we pray. There are so many Pharaohs today that are holding men and women in our society, in our community. He doesn't want to let them go. That young lady there just messing up and they're almost getting spoiled. The devil has done that. That young man with all the labor going to church and he cannot stop but that sin, enemy has done that. And so if we don't pray down the power of Pharaoh holding them, that young girl, that young man can never be free. So thus says the Lord, God of the Hebrews, let my people go and that they may serve me, that they may serve me. In chapter 10, look at verse 3. Chapter 10, verse 3, 7, and 11. 10, 3, 7, and 11. And Moses said unto Aaron, Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long would thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. In verse 7, And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go. Your miracle is nearer. Your freedom is nearer. All along, it had been Moses talking and talking. A time came now, all the servants of Pharaoh now joined their voice together. I said, no. We are suffering a lot for leaving Israelites to remain here. We are suffering a lot. I want to tell you that there will be catastrophe in the camp of your enemies. Any power that are trying to hold you, they won't allow you to go and make expected progress in life, their camp will catch fire. I said their camp will catch fire. A time came, all the servants now joined their voices with Moses. I said, man, Pharaoh, don't, don't prove stubborn anymore. Time has come. You better let these people go. If there were 10 enemies in your village that team up together, that you will never make progress, something will happen to them one after the other. And the remaining one will advise themselves. Praise the Lord. Do you understand the meaning of that? I said the remaining one will advise themselves. Because when God begins to fight for you, they will not be, in fact, they will not continue, they will not be able to continue to keep you in bondage. Now, the servants now join their voice together with Moses and Aaron. He said, Pharaoh, you better let it go because we are suffering. We are suffering. Look at this. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go and they may serve the Lord. What do you see there? Dear God, your enemies will agree to release you. You know, he said, Let the people go. Let them go and serve their God. Because of this, people we are suffering. See what's happening in Egypt. Compression everywhere. And you are still adding your hand. Let them go. Nowhere's thou not. Listen to this. Nowhere's thou not yet. That Egypt, what do you see there? Is destroyed. Pharaoh, don't you know there's a problem down in Egypt? Confusion down in Egypt? You see trouble here and there, sinners there and there, problem here and there in Egypt? You don't know that Egypt is destroyed because of your hardiness and because you refuse to let these people go? Look at the next thing that follows. In verse 11, verse 11, not so, go now. Ye that are men and serve the Lord. A time has come, your enemy will concur. Your enemy will bow. Your enemy will be subjected. They will release you. You know, no matter what they have done in the past, the finger of God will break their powers. And so a time came, you read the Bible very well, Israelites came out of Egypt. God loosed them. 
God brought them out. They were out of bondage. And then they were able to become what God had destined for them. You know, Israel would not have become a nation if they were still in Egypt. Am I right? Am I right? They would not have enjoyed all the promises of God in the promised land if they were still in Egypt. Am I right? So God brought them out to take them to that place which he has prepared for them to enjoy all the good. I'm telling you, so many good things are waiting for you. But as long as you are in bondage, you are in sin, tied down by the devil, bound by Satan, and that limits you. But today, you'll be loose in the name of Jesus Christ. So everyone in bondage is under the taskmaster. Today, you'll be free from your taskmaster. You cannot do what God has destined you to do if you are in bondage. You cannot go where God has destined you to go to if you are in bondage. You cannot become what God has destined you to become in life and all that if you are not loose. Simple. God wanted to take Israelite to the promised land. But as long as they remain in Egypt, they can never have two things at the same time. No, God wants to take you to a level in life. As long as the sin continues to control your life and ruin your life and reign over you, you can't get to that point. That was exactly what Jesus Christ did for Lazarus. Number one, he was in the grave. He brought him out. And then he commanded the people to lose him. And when he came out of the grave, he was still being tied by the grave cloth. And a person like that cannot see. A person like that cannot move. So if Christ had stopped there, Lazarus would have remained a useless man. God never created you to be a useless man. All the potentials, all the things that God has put in you, he wants you to use every one of them. And so he said, lose him. Remove the, glo- uh, the grave cloth from him. All those things that will make him not to be able to move and see and go and uh, as far as he wants to go, he said, lose him from all those things and then let him go, release him to go and then begin to make progress and succeed. And that's exactly what will happen to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now before we pray, in summary, what am I saying? Just three things. Lose him from sin to salvation. That's what we read in Romans chapter 7. From verse 14 down to 25 every sinner is in bondage they can they cannot truly and sincerely serve God until they are loose from sin so number one every sinner must be loose from sin to salvation number two loose from sickness to healing Deliverance and health. That's what Christ did in Luke chapter 13. That this woman was bound by Satan. Jesus loosed her. I do not know what, is, what has tied you down, what has captured your life and your future, bound you. Jesus will lose you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, number three, in summary, loose from limitation. To unlimited progress and usefulness. You know, until you are loose, you'll be limited to so many things. Limited to so many things. You want to go here, you can't go. That's what happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. They didn't have all the liberty. They couldn't do everything they wanted to do. They could not exercise their willpower. Look at Lazarus. He came out of the grave. But he was still tied, bound. But that I could not walk, couldn't move, couldn't succeed, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't see afar. And so, just commanded that Lazarus should be loose from that limited. I want to tell you today, after this very prayer this morning, God will take away every limitation from you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, he was to be loose from limitation. Okay, I would have become this, but this tied me down. I would have been able to get to that position, but I was restricted. I should have been able to become this and that, but I was limited. No. So when you are loose from limitation, then God will take you to unlimited progress. 
that means that no restriction, no barrier, no limitation, that you can get to anywhere, achieve anything, succeed anywhere, become anything that God wants you to become in life. But as long as you are bound, you will not be able to have that liberty to go anywhere and everywhere. A lot of people are captured by their, in their mind. They have no liberty to serve God, to love God, to pray, to, 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 to do the service of God. That's why this morning, you'll be loose from all forms of limitation to unlimited progress, unlimited success, unlimited usefulness. Look at the cult that Christ commanded should be loose. That cult was tied. Am I right? And as long as that cult remains tied, it can never be useful. And today, whatever has tied you, tied your progress, tied your future, tied your womb from getting children, tied your marriage proposal, tied everything good in your life. I tell you this morning, you will pray with anger and you'll be loose in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you are loosed by God, good things will begin to happen. Rise up now and let us pray. You pray and say, God, lose me. God, lose me. I don't know what is tying you down. Is this sin that is tying you? Say, God, lose me. Is this sin that is tying you down? God, say, God, lose me. Is it limitation? You want to go here? No way. You want to try this? No way. You want to do this? No way. Everything about you is as if you cannot succeed in life. Tell God to lose you. I hope you are praying. Open your mouth and say, God, lose me. Lose me and let me go. Lose me and let me go. That should be your prayer point now. Lose me, oh God. Lose my husband. Lose my wife. Lose my children. Lose my family. Lose me, oh God, and let me go. Lose me, oh God, from sin to righteousness and let me go and serve you. Lose me from sickness to healing and deliverance and uh, health. God, lose me. Whatever has tied you down and has limited your progress and has limited your success, I want you to pray and say, God, lose me. Let God lose you from limitation. All the limitation here and there. You try this, it doesn't work. You try that, it doesn't work. You want to go there, the door is blocked, the door is closed against you. Limitation here and there. Limitation here and there. God wants to lose you from that limitation and take you to unlimited progress. Unlimited progress. Do you know that even though Lazarus was out of the grave, he was limited. He was still tied. He was still tied. A tight man. A tight man, a tight woman can never go far, can never be black, can never make progress. Ask God to lose you, lose you from poverty, lose you from barrenness, lose you from misfortune, lose you from bad luck, lose you from every mishap, every evil. Let God lose you right now. You need the losing of God. When you are loosed by God, I'm telling you, you'll be able to go far. As long as you remain in bondage and as long as you remain tied by sin, by sickness, by Satan, by bad luck, by limitations, and you cannot be your best. You can't be your best. Let God lose you this morning. Let the power of God lose you this morning. God wants you to go far. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to get to the top. He wants you to ar 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 I mean, get to the top of the ladder, the up top of the mountain. But th there are limitations here and there. Other things trying to tie you down, trying to tie you down. Say, you cannot get there. Let God lose you this morning and you'll be free. You'll be free. Jesus commanded that Lazarus should be loose. And loose and let him go. Loose and let him go. I'm losing you this morning and let you go. I'm losing you this morning. God will lose you this morning. And when you are loose, you will go and succeed. You we are loose to succeed. Loose and you go and make progress. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. There's a better future for you. A better tomorrow for you. There's a husband waiting for you. There's a wife waiting for you. There's a child waiting for you. Admission waiting for you. He said, lose him from sin, from sickness, from poverty, from limitation, losing from failure, losing from every bad thing. Let him go. Let him go and succeed. Let him go and make progress. Let him go and excel in life. 
let him go. All forms of limitation around you, my brother, my sister, God wants to lose you. When you are loose, success is short. When you are loose, progress is short. When you are loose, you can serve God freely. You can love God freely. You can pray freely. You can go to any length, any level in life, unlimited. But as long as you are tied, tied, you cannot be useful. God does not want any enemy to tie you down. He doesn't want you to remain in bondage forever. He keeps tending and sending Moses and Aaron. Go and tell Pharaoh. Go and tell Pharaoh. Go and tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. Let my people go. Let him release my people. Let them come and serve me. God wants us to succeed. He wants us to serve him. What is that thing that's limiting you? That is tying you down? That's making you not to be your best spiritually in your prayer life? your financial life, your marital life, all those enemies tying you here, tying you here, tying you here, tying you here, and the Lord is saying, lose him, lose him, lose that sister, lose that brother, lose that girl, lose that boy. It's, what is that sin tying you down? God wants to lose you from that sin. You can't be a true Christian except you are free from sin, except you are loose from sin. You cannot be a restored person except you are loose from backsliding. All those things that you are doing and the devil using that against you and against your future, let God lose you. Let God release you and you'll be free and free to serve the Lord, to love the Lord, to work for God. You know, a lot of people struggle to serve God. They struggle to love God. They struggle to pray. They struggle to come to church. They struggle to live for God. They struggle to overcome sin. Struggle here, struggle here. Struggle there, struggle there. It's because of this limitation. They want to do something for God. They cannot do it. There are limitations here and there. Limitations here and there. There are people that struggle to do, get the best in life, but there's no way. It's as if everything about them, every door against them is closed. Everywhere they go, no progress because they are tied. Enemy tie them, enemy close their eyes, enemy blindfold them, and because they are tied, their hands are tied, they can't make progress, they are less tied, they can't go to where they will succeed, and their eyes are tied, they can't see the future, they can't see better, they can't see anything good, and they are tied. If you are not loose, then you remain like that. Ask the Lord to lose you, and God wants to lose you. God is not happy that you are in that condition. God is not happy that you are not going forward. God is not happy that you are not making progress. God is not happy that you are not married. God is not happy that you have no child. God is not happy that you have no job. God is not happy that you are not succeeding. God is not happy that you are not prayerful. God is not happy that you cannot win souls. God is not happy that things are like that with you. Everything is zigzag. Everything crumbling. No. Tell God to lose you. God wants to lose you, my brother, my sister, from the hand of the wicked. From the hand of the enemy, from attackers, enemy in the village, in the town, God wants to lose you. Enemy from the town, anywhere, God wants to lose you. Enemy that hinder your job, God wants to lose you. Enemy that hinder your marriage, God wants to lose you. Enemy that hinder your future, your progress, God wants to lose you. Enemy that hinder you from serving the Lord, God wants to lose you. That power that is holding you, telling you, you can't serve God, you can't repent, God wants to lose you. You want to break the chain of the devil, has the power to lose you and it has the power to lose you has got to lose you you cannot continue the bondage of sin has got to lose you you cannot continue the sickness that you have has got to lose you you cannot continue in poverty. Ask God to lose you. You cannot continue with that husband, with that wife. Ask God to lose you. You cannot continue with that a better future. Ask God to lose you. You cannot continue with that progress. Ask God to lose you. God is interested in your freedom. God is interested in your deliverance. 
Let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Indirectly, he was saying, Lose my people. Lose my people. Release my people. Let them go. So they can be their best. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Rise up, everybody. If you believe you are praying, can you shout a better amen? amen? I can assure you, you are loose. I said you are loose. From sin to salvation, you are loose. From sickness to healing, deliverance, and good health, you are loose. From limitation to unlimited progress, you are loose. Any power that has held you in the past, saying you cannot serve God, you cannot worship God like Israelites in Egypt, they wanted to sacrifice and make a feast to God, but they were not allowed. They wanted to serve their God. And God said, no, my people cannot continue like this. If they are in bondage, they will not be able to give me the best. And I want to tell you that whatever has made you not able to give God the best, God will bring you out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. If it is sin or sickness or poverty or barrenness or no husband or lack of job, God will bring you out in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants you to come out of all the things that tie you down. You will be useful, profitable. From today, after this prayer, you will cross to the other side. There was a promised land waiting for the Israelites. But they were wasting and wasting right there in Egypt. They were not enjoying the promised land. And God said, no, my people cannot end their life this way. There was a promised land waiting for them. There was a land filled with milk and honey for them. And after this prayer, you will be loose right now. And God will take you to the land flowing with milk and honey. Husband waiting for you. A job waiting for you. Healing waiting for you. Salvation waiting for you. You will be able to love God and serve the Lord from your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up your two hands. Father, I command that every sister here be loose. Every brother here be loose. Every worker here be loose. Anything that tied down your people, no matter how long, like that coat, that could not be useful, and nobody ever sat on it because it was tied down somewhere. Lord, I'm asking that whatever enemy has used, to tie your people, either by sin or sickness or barrenness or poverty or whatever, I lose them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any power that has tied you down, I command the fire of God to consume that power in the name of Jesus Christ. Any Pharaoh anywhere, present Pharaoh today, in the village, in the town, that has tied your future, tied your fortune, tied your progress, I break that power now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, when you commanded Lazarus to be loose, you also gave me a command, loose him and let him go. My father, I lose your children, and I command them to go. To go and be peaceful. To go and enjoy salvation. To go and love God. To go and serve the Lord. To go and be healed. To go and prosper. To go and marry. To go and secure a job. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, anything that have tied down their future in the past, let that chain be broken. Lord, from this day, your children are loose. Your children are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm asking, Father, that from this day, something miraculous, something spectacular, they will know it. Something will happen to that sister, to that brother, 
and he will know and she will know the members of the family will know the friends will know that something new has happened so let it be in the name of Jesus Christ all those who have been struggling to serve God to live right to repent and they have been coming to church and struggling that boy, that girl, Lord I pray today let the liberty come let the freedom come in the name of Jesus Christ every form of sickness hiding anywhere in the system in their body that has troubled them I will not give them peace I will not give them rest I command every sickness get out now in the name of Jesus Christ sickness in the brain get out sickness on the chest get out sickness in the blood get out the kidney problem the heart problem the lungs problem I command you disappear in the name of Jesus Christ high blood pressure come down to normal in Jesus name that migraine headache I command you stop now in the name of Jesus Christ Lord that woman that cannot sleep comfortably in the night because of problem in the night sometimes bad dreams sometimes this one and be rolling on the bed father from tonight I command sleep upon her in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I pray poverty take it away Badness, take it away. Those sisters that have gotten to the age of having husband, but there have been that hindrance, call it human hindrance, or spiritual hindrance. Father, I lose them now. Father, I lose them now. Father, I lose them now. We will hear testimony that people are coming for them. We shall hear testimony that people are coming for them. Lord, let the door of job be open. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered my prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let the people of God shout a better amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.